coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you will ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the Word. Go for the Word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I said on the cross that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yay! Pastor Chris, word hearing. 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. He is a mighty God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Glory to his holy name. It's not difficult to follow Jesus. I'm reading from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry. He said the bones were very dry, dry bones in the open valley. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will curse breath to enter into you, and ye shall leave. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And he shall leave, and he shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. When I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up, Upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, prophesy to these bones. God said, prophesy to these bones. Prophecy is so important. Moses said, I would to God that all of his children would be prophets. I would that they would all prophesy. To prophesy means to speak words of power. Words that are filled with the ability of God. Whether you are foretelling events, definitely if they come to pass, that's the word of God. That's the word of power. Because you spoke ahead of time and it came to pass. Hallelujah. Or is it speaking out, speaking forth the mind of God concerning an issue or a person or a place. And it works. That is the word of power. George said in the last days, God who pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Will you turn to the book of Acts? Peter quoted him from Joel, the second chapter, and from the 28th verse. But we'll read it from Acts, chapter number 2. 
<clears throat> you know when the world came to the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? In Acts chapter 2 and read from verse 1. And the people who had come to Jerusalem for the feast of Pentecost, when they heard the noise, they mocked them, they mocked the disciples and said, they're drunk. From verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, praise God. He said, they shall prophesy, they shall speak words of power. Hallelujah. You know, back in those days, if you spoke a word, a word that was anointed with the Spirit of God, and it had power and came to pass, they knew you to be a prophet. Because they knew only those that were sent by the power of God, sent by the Spirit of God, could cause such things to take place. They, they said the man was a prophet. Hallelujah. Prophets have signs and wonders. Glory to God. But there is such a thing as the office of a prophet. And that's not what I'm dealing with right now. We're dealing with that manifestation of the Spirit of God. Where we speak words that come to pass, words that affect our lives, words that affect the circumstances that we find ourselves, words that affect our future, words that affect our homes, our bodies. Hallelujah. On a certain occasion, in the book, St. Luke's Gospel, I believe the seventh chapter, St. Luke's Gospel, Yeah, I'm reading from the 11th verse. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. Jesus went into that city. And many of his disciples went with him and much people, a large crowd. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. Can you imagine? She was a widow. And now her only son was dead. And they're carrying him away to bury him. Verse 13, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Oh, glory. And said unto her, Weep not. How do you stop a woman from weeping? Her husband is dead. Now her only son is dead. And they're taking him away. And the master comes to her and says, Weep not, woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God says, Don't weep, He says it because He's about to do something. Amen. I like it. Now watch it here. When the Lord saw her, verse 13, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier. That's an open coffin. There's no, no cover at the top. And they that bore him stood still. When Jesus came and touched it, they stopped. And he said, Oh, hallelujah. Young man, I say unto thee, arise. Glory to God. He's talking to the man that was dead. God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to the bones. 
Now Jesus talks to the cops. He said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Hey, doesn't Jesus inspire you? This is remarkable. He said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up. <laughs> Glory to God. He sat up and began to speak. Where are you taking me to? Hallelujah. And he delivered him to his mother. Jesus delivered him to his mother. Oh, this is what I like. Watch it, verse 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. They said the great prophet has come. Why? Because the man spoke. He talked to a dead man. And the dead man heard him and got up. He must be a prophet. They said they're sparring the man's words. Everybody ran into town. And guess what? There's a prophet in town. His words come to pass. How'd you know? He talked to a dead man, man. And the man got up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. They said, the great prophet is risen among us. In the last days, he said, God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And Peter said, that day has come. Hallelujah. That day has come. Imagine what news. He's talking to the Jews. They knew it when Moses said, Would to God that all of God's people would prophesy. They knew it when Joel said, In the last days, God's going to pour His Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Everybody's going to prophesy. Hallelujah. Right there in your house, you'll prophesy. Right there on the job, you'll prophesy. you speak words of power. And now Peter says, it's come to pass. This is the day. Everybody would prophesy. Oh, this is wonderful. You know, in the ninth chapter of the book of John, I believe, yeah, St. John's Gospel, Jesus met a man who was, who was born blind. And he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and rubbed the man's eyes. Bible scholars say that the man, his blindness was a special kind of blindness. The man actually had no eyes. In other words, he just had holes. Didn't have eyeballs there. So he was blind in that way. He, he had holes there. So Jesus made clay and formed new eyes. <laughs> Dropped them in the sockets, hallelujah. And said to the man, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man went and washed and came back seen. And people who saw him, he, he was a beggar. And people who saw him said, Hey, that guy looks like the man who was begging uh, at that junction. Oh, others said, oh, he looks like him. Then he said, I am he. Hallelujah. So they asked him, they said, how, how come you can now see? He said, the man called Jesus made clay and put them in my eyes and told me to go wash. And I came back seeing. They said, where is he? He said, I don't know where he is. Surprise. They got him to the Pharisees. The Pharisees said, tell us. Were you blind? Yes, sir. How come you can now see? Well, I already told you folks, a man called Jesus made clay and put them in the sockets of my eyes. And I, I washed and I came back seeing. The man told me to wash. And I did. I can see. Oh, no, they said. 
Hmm. Lie. We know Jesus. We know him. Where are your parents? Must be at home, sir. Go get them. The parents came. And then they asked him, Tell us, this is your son. You say that he was born blind? <laughs> Do you say he was born blind? Yeah. How come he can now see? They said, sir, um, he's of age, ask him. <laughs> they turned back to the man. Were you blind? He said, yeah. What? Did you say you saw the man Jesus? Yeah. Oh, we know him. He's a sinner. He said, I don't know if he's a sinner, but he opened my eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he said, tell us, what did he do to you? He said, I already told you, and you don't believe. Do you want to be his disciples? They said, never. <laughs> never. They asked him a question. All right, now, what, what do you say of him? Oh, glory. The man said, he's a prophet. Hallelujah. He said, he's a prophet. They asked him, what do you say of him? He said, he's a prophet. See, in those days, the man they called prophet was the man who had the word of God. Whoever carried the word of God and spoke it out. They said, he's a prophet. He carried the word of God. And the word came to pass. They said, that man's a prophet. What do you call him? He said, he's a prophet. And they said, get out of here. Hallelujah. The prophet Jesus. Hallelujah. Ezekiel. He stands before the valley full of bones. Very dry. God says, son of man. Is there hope for these bones? It's up to you, sir. No, God said, mm -mm. prophesy to the bones. Talk to the bones. You're going to learn to prophesy to your car. You're going to learn to prophesy, hallelujah, to your body. You prophesy to your future. Glory to God. He said, in the last day, he said, God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall speak words of power. Your future is in your hands. Know it now. Is it your, you see, your, you are responsible, fully responsible for your future. Nobody else is responsible for it. You are. It's in your hands. There's no saying what you can imagine. There's no saying what you can make. The Bible says, Thou hast set the world eternity in their hearts. Kenneth Hagin tells a story. A woman who came to, to him for prayer for his for her 15 year old son and he said it's not going to do any good why so because if i pray you will nullify it because you're always telling that guy how he's going to end up in the penitentiary he will never amount to anything so it will not do any good for me to pray for him you would nullify my prayer Oh, she said, how, how do you know I've been saying that? He said, because of the outcome. So she said, so what am I going to do? Well, he said, there's a lot of things you should have done before now. Well, now he's 15. There's a lot you should have done before now. Praise God, there's a lot you can do while they're still young. Amen. Glory to God. He said, well, anyway, stop troubling him about getting saved or being saved. Thank God for his life. 
and saying, God, wherever he is, instead of worrying, I don't know where my son is, where well, maybe some accident is going to take place, maybe something's going to happen, they may bring him back home, you know, trouble. Oh, don't talk like that anymore, he said. He said, thank God, and say, Lord, I cast all my cares upon you because you care for me and you care for my son. So wherever he is, he's right in your hands. She began to learn that. She came back several months later and said it was hard, but it worked. Now he's born again just the way he was out for the devil. He's now all out for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Young Gitcho tells the same story. A woman came to him and said, help me, my daughter's making the whole family sick. She's so wayward. She's evil. She's a sinner. I pray to God nothing has changed. Oh, he said, woman, you are in a greater trouble than your daughter. You're worse off. Can't you just see for a moment a beautiful, successful, decent daughter? Oh, oh no, she said. He, she's wayward. Right now she's in the hotel somewhere with some man. The father is embarrassed. The brothers are embarrassed. We don't know what to do with her. Don't talk like that. She said, I can't help it. Well, as long as you see your daughter that way, that's the way she's going to be. See your daughter coming back home. See your daughter born again. Filled with God's spirit. A wonderful Christian. Oh, she said, <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> well, young Gitcho said, I'm not going to pray until you see that. If you don't see that, we can't pray. So you write this down. My daughter is born again. My daughter is filled with the spirit. My daughter is a wonderful Christian. She's coming back home. You know, all those nice things. Take this home and go read it, read it again and again and again. Then when you believe it and you're filled with it and you can say it, then you come back and we pray. She left. Several weeks later, she came back. Guess what? She just knocked at the door and said, Pastor, my daughter is a wonderful Christian. She's saved. She's coming back home. Oh, I just can't wait. Thank God. Hear it. Hold on, woman. Hold on. She was filled with it. She was filled with joy. Pastor said, yeah, now we can pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree that that which she has prophesied will come to pass. Hallelujah. Few nights later, late in the night time, there was a knock at the door. They opened it, and who was it? The daughter came in. She said, I don't know what happened to me, but something came over me in that hotel room, and I got rid of the man and came right here. I want Jesus in my heart. Glory to God. And she was born again and filled the Holy Ghost that night. Don't tell me it doesn't work. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can prophesy your future. He said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You don't know what you've got. Your future is in your hands. Hallelujah. Many times people have not known that they were prophesying when they were talking. When you speak a word of power, that's a prophecy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. They said a great prophet is reason. Because he talked to the dead man and he got up. Moses talked to the rock. Well, he didn't quite make that, you remember. God expected him to do that and he failed. He was used to the old, the old move. Strike the rock! Slap me on the head. Do you have some oil in your bottle? I need a hanky. My man too. There's something in your mouth. Hallelujah. There's something in your mouth. Hallelujah. There's something in your mouth. Oh, glory. There's something in your mouth. The 
power is there. There's where it is. Tell somebody there's something in your mouth. There's power in you. Power in your tongue. See, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And that's no mistake. That's no mistake. That's no mistake. That's no mistake. Jesus said you shall have what you say. Nobody ever likes me. Nobody ever helps me. I I know nobody likes me. That's what you're going to have. Nobody's going to like you. You are saying, I believe that nobody ever likes me. Nobody's going to like me. You know, that's you. That's your prophecy. You are a... Oh, glory. He said, in the last days, I'll make you prophesy. Think about it. We are a kingdom of priests. Understand the Old Testament. See, the king, the priest, and the prophets, that's where the anointing was. In the New Testament, it's the same thing. He has made us what? Kings and priests unto God and his father, the Bible says. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Now we understand we have been filled with God's Holy Spirit to prophesy. In this context... He has made us what? Prophets. Our words come to pass. Our words work. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. What are you going to do to your life? What are you going to do to your life? See, when I found this kind of things, this now I discovered a long time ago when I found this stuff, I said, Wow! I looked at me in the mirror. I said, you will never fail. Uh, hallelujah. Never! I'm on my way shooting up high. On, 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 on. Come down, not me. I found out the whole thing is here. These Christians of nowadays, they're trying to be God. We are not trying to be God. We are gods. So it says, ah, they have finally said it. (laughs) Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. St. John's Gospel, 10th chapter. And I'm reading from verse 34. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If ye call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Are you hearing that? Listen, he said, if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came. Oh, I wish you... He says, say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and said into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. He said, if God called them gods. Hmm. Why don't you turn to the book of Psalms? 82. Psalm 82, 82, 82, 82. I like it. I think it's good. It's a short one. We can just read the whole thing so we can get the right context. Is that all right? From verse 1 God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, He judgeth among the gods. He is not talking of. Let's go on. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the presence of the wicked, Silla? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. They know not. Neither will they 
understand. So what? They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Do you understand what's going on here? Out of course. Everything is unstable. Things are not working out right. I have said ye are gods. See it there. Verse 6. And all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men. Why? Because they don't know and they don't understand. And fall like one of the princes. And the man cried out, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Did you see that? Did you see that? Look at it, look at it, look at it. This was where Jesus quoted it from. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. In sickness, in poverty, depression, unhappiness. Why? Because they keep looking around the circumstances of their life. Feeling the pains. Everything they see, they talk according to what they see physically. They walk according to their sensory perception. He said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Hallelujah. So what? All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Things are not working out right. He laid the foundations and said, this way, man has changed it. Health foundation is unstable. Success foundation, unstable. Prosperity foundation, unstable. But when God made all things, he founded them rightly. He said, it is very good. Everything he said, it is very good. How come it is not very good? Somebody looks at his future and says, everything is bleak. It is not very good. You go for the doctor's report. They give it to you. It is not very good. Look at your financial life. It is not very good. What's happening to you? God says they know not. Neither will they understand. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. It's not God who's cursing it. He said I have said ye are gods. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. When you recognize this stuff, you're going to say, my God, thank you. Woo! I'll never be poor. I'll never be a failure. I'm a success. I'm a victor. I live in health in the name of Jesus. Somebody says, well, I don't believe that. Yeah, I can see you don't believe it. You remember? You don't, you don't have to look far to know who believes it and who doesn't. Brother, it doesn't matter how you start in life. When you get a hold of this thing, don't let it go. We have some people coming up and saying, nowadays many preachers are coming up and preaching prosperity. This prosperity message doesn't work. Shut up, sir! If you don't know nothing about it, shut your trap. When we talk poor, nobody talked about it. But now we talk big and they say, You know, people, they love the testimonies of, we were very poor in those days. And so we started, you know, they want to talk about how God now lifted them from poverty to wealth. Somebody said, if you're going to have a gift of healing, you have to experience sickness in your life. I don't believe that. God didn't say that. I was never poor. There was never a time I wanted food and I didn't have. 
I don't have that kind of testimony, brother. You know the way some folks give us their testimony. Brethren, in fact, when I was in the world, I was the worst sinner. I killed, I raped, I destroyed, I pulled out everything. They, they destroyed everything. I was the worst sinner in my streets. They make the rest of us who didn't necessarily become a rubber or anything to look down on our salvation. Brother, you didn't have to go into hell to be born again. Hallelujah. I, I grew up following my daddy to church. And grew up like that. That doesn't mean my salvation is substandard. What are you talking about? If you were the worst of sinners, say, God, the amount of sin is not what matters. It's your recognition of the greatness of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not how much you did. It's how much you know that's been done for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. And what is God saying? He said, I have said. He didn't say, I say. Look at it there. I have said. In other words, they are not hearing. He has told them already. He's saying everything he has done has proved it. He called Adam. He said, I give you everything. I give all into your hands. The fish of the sea, the birds of the earth, the beasts of the field. He said, everything is in your hands. How else do you want him to say ye are gods? He called Adam. He said, give names to all these animals. Whatever you call them, that's what will remain. And the guy named them without repeating himself. Which computer has done that? Hallelujah. I have said, ye are gods. Can you say amen? amen? So now he says, because of sin, because of the evil, and things that can turn out right now, he fills us with his spirit and says, go and prophesy. Prophesy. Young man came to me one time, he said, everything I've ever done has failed. Yes. I said, have you been born again for long? Oh, yes, several years. And he was crying. I opened the Bible. See here who's responsible for riches. God. Wealth. God. Strength. God. Who makes men great? God. I said, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go forth and prosper. And fail no more. And he never came back a failure. Are you still there? You know sometimes people they say want to travel. You know I mean we get a lot of letters. People talking about they want to travel. Help me get a visa. I want to travel. Pray for me. Uh, my, My brother is in America. My sister is in London. My uncle in Russia. Well, nobody wants to go to the uncle in Russia. (laughs) Yes, he doesn't have anything to offer. Praise God. But you know, I always say, I can help you get a visa. Somebody say, Woo! Right after the service, man! (laughs) No, sir! Because it's all in the word. Do you understand? We don't have any reason to fail. Listen, failure, failure is ruled out. Until you have that mentality. Listen, what what I say, a mentality, a spiritual mentality. Don't know how to put it. Not just your head. But there is, you see, the Bible talks of spiritual senses. Amen. There's a new kind of thinking. There's a new kind of thinking. And the only way you get that is not by praying to God to give it to you. You study the word of God. The word will change your thinking. The word will change your thinking. For example, I cannot get healing from malaria. I can't. 
I cannot be healed from malaria. I cannot be healed from any disease. I cannot. Someone says, what? No, 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 I don't know about you, but I can't. Oh, if you injured yourself, wounded yourself, yeah. Healing is the children's bread. You just say, ah! Mommy, you and someone was 40 years old, say, Daddy, <laughs> he's 40. Kicked his foot against him, Daddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Call Jesus. Call Jesus. Oh, woman, the son was dying of tuberculosis. And, 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 oh, Lord. And the son was over her laps, and she was crying, she was crying. She was calling her, her own father's name, who had died a long time ago. She was crying. And the boy died. Because they told her her father was a very strong man. And she was born again. She couldn't call Jesus. She's calling her father's name. Hallelujah. Are you still there? So I, I can't get healed from that kind of disease. I can't get healed from any disease. Why? Because I cannot be diseased. The very fact that I'm claiming healing from malaria is to accept that I have received the infection. I cannot have an infection. What are you talking about? Somebody's... Hmm. <laughs> You don't understand this stuff. Relax. You're coming. Glory to God. You're coming. So it says, what if the dad knows? They ain't going to find nothing like that. They carried me on either side of my body one time to the doctor. And I was going like that. One on this side, one on this side. I was so, my body was hot and I was so weak, you know. And they said they, they, they needed to get me to be treated. I said they will not find any sickness in my body. They said, Let's get there. We got there. Doctor tested and tested. Told him everything. Said from what you are saying, this could be typhoid. I said no, sir. Said well, we'll have a test. He did. Neil. I said you can't find it in my blood. Hallelujah. This blood has been touched by the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. You can't find it in my blood. Somebody says, well, they mistakenly injected HIV infected blood into your system. Brother, the moment it got into me, it changed. Please check that thing very well before you press. Check it very well. Is it a new needle? Please, oh. Please, oh. Please, oh. <laughs> Not me, sir. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's in the word. Blood type D. That's what I got. That's what I have. That's what's flowing through my veins. When you are born again, listen. You don't know this. If you don't know it, you know what happens to you? Satan's lying wonders. The symptoms will come. They are all a lie. The symptoms will come there. Oh. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Through knowledge. It's about time we prophesied to many in the hospitals. Instead of him counting his days to death and counting his days to the grave. He said, we will not let you die. You're coming out of here in the name of Jesus. I said, we're coming. We're on our way. Can you say amen? amen? 
and I don't mean this critically, I heard a preacher say very recently, he said, I get discouraged. I don't mean this critically. And that just went through my spirit. He said, I get discouraged sometimes. Jesus got discouraged. I said, no, no, he didn't. He quoted a portion of scripture. I said, no, he didn't. Jesus didn't get discouraged. He said, I'm exceedingly sorrowful unto death. That is not discouragement. The Bible says that Jesus obeyed totally. If he did, when God said to Joshua, only be courageous. That word stood for Jesus. No one could be more courageous than Jesus. Don't say, I'm a human being. So when, then he just said it. I'm a human being. When he said it, I said, no wonder. He hasn't caught it yet. As long as you say, I'm a human being. Human beings get discouraged. Human beings become afraid. Human beings give up. Human beings are dismayed. Don't look back. Look forward. Hallelujah. You were born human. The life with which you came from your mother has ceased to be. Listen, Christianity is a real thing. It is real. Are you hearing me? It is real. Christianity is real. It's not something we wear. No. We are not faking it. We are not merely, we are not trying to spiritualize. When you were born again, it actually affected your life. Praise the Lord. The word of God has actually come into your spirit and given you light and given you life and has made you an actual child of God. Listen, the rapture we talk about is not figurative. When the Bible says that we will go to heaven, it's not like through thinking. We will actually be transported from this earth. We will surely live here. Depart from this earth. And be gone from here. And I can tell you daily times will carry the next day. CNN, BBC, they are gone. Some of us will say, where are they? Hallelujah. That's the truth. Christianity is a real thing. So when we say we're born again, we're not, we're not talking of changing our mind, changing our lifestyle, changing our way of doing things, making up our mind afresh. I used to do this. I don't do this like the song they sing. Things I used to do, I do them no more. What do you mean? That has nothing to do with it. Praise God. You know that has nothing to do with it? It's not things I used to do, I do them no more. The truth is, it's not you that used to do them. The man that used to do them is dead. But that's what the Bible says. Someone says it's figurative. It's your, 
you know, the resurrection has become figurative. The Bible says anybody that does not confess that Jesus is come in the flesh, he said, have nothing to do with him. If they tell you his resurrection was figurative, he said, don't follow them. That's another way of telling you that our salvation is a real salvation. It's not figurative. He came out of the grave. His whole body came out. This Jesus who was buried came out. When he came out of that cocoon, they saw it, John said, he saw it and believed because no human being could come out of that thing. Not the grave, but the cocoon. That thing made of grave clothes that had hardened around his body. Only the neck area was left. The one for his head had not been done. Because it was, they didn't have enough time. They said, we'll come and continue after the Sabbath. They came and Jesus had folded that one. It was a napkin over his head. They will come and finish the embalming later. The Bible says, according to the Jewish custom, and the Jewish custom, they got it from the Egyptians. Are you hearing me? They will wrap that dead body up like an Egyptian mummy. The thing will harden. Jesus came out of it. Are you hearing me? Only that neck area was seen. That's the only hole. Peter and John got there. Peter entered first. John came in after him. John said when he saw it, he believed. What do you mean they stole his body? Without destroying this thing? And Jesus was not in a hurry. The Bible says he folded the napkin and put it beside it. That same Jesus went through the walls, the doors and windows being shut. They said, this is a, it's a ghost. He said, touch me. He said, the spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see me have. They touched him. He said, bring food. He ate. That resurrection was not what? Figurative. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? That life has come into us. The Bible says right now we are groaning within ourselves to experience the redemption of our body. That is what we are waiting for. It says all creation is groaning in pain. Awaiting the redemption of our bodies. One of these days, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortality must put on immortality. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. But right now, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. In the appearance, we don't look it. But on the inside, now are we the sons of God. This message is in three parts. To order for the complete package, log on to www.christembassyonlinestore.org.